On tonight's program, we're going to continue our study on Copernicus and the Jews. We're also going to talk about our campaign to remove Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez from Congress. And, of course, our kids are going to be heading back to school this month. And, of course, more children are going to be introduced to more propaganda in the classroom. So we'll talk about what California is considering introducing to their students in the state. Tonight, I want to welcome you. I'm Laurie Cardoza-Moore, president of Proclaiming Justice to the Nations, a nonprofit organization whose mission is to educate Christians about our biblical responsibility to stand with our Jewish brethren and defend the state of Israel against the rise of global anti-Semitism. We accomplish our mission by producing award-winning programs and documentary films. We distribute those programs through our 22 global media partners, reaching over 2 billion viewers every week. So we're delighted to have you um, on the program tonight. If this is your first time to be with us, we hope you find it inform informative. This is our program every week where we get to communicate with you, engage with our audience, because we hear from many of you throughout the week who email me or contact our office about questions you have with regards to events that are uh, unfolding in our community, some of the films or programs that you've watched during the week, um, PJTN films, as well as this program also. So we're right here on Facebook and we're live. And so if you want to ask a question, you want to make a comment, please do so because periodically during the program, we are going to um, read those comments and answer those questions. So we welcome you here tonight to join with us. Um, I also want to um, encourage you that if you have any questions, you can always email us at comments at pjtn.org. And I typically will answer those questions on the program the following week. I also want to encourage you, that if you have not considered doing so, to become a PJTN watchman. A watchman's role is critically important in any, any city. And, of course, in ancient biblical times, the watchman was the one who stood watch to inform the inhabitants of the city if danger was approaching or if an enemy, an army, was approaching the city. And the watchman's role was to alarm, sound the alarm, blow the shofar, blow the trumpets, to alert the citizens, the inhabitants, um, of danger. And so, of course, as a watchman, it is our responsibility and if we do not sound the alarm to our communities when we see the enemy approaching, much like what we see happening today in our country, then we will be held responsible if any innocent blood is shed. However, if we do um, warn the inhabitants of the city and they refuse to listen and they die because they didn't listen, then their blood will be upon them. That's a biblical concept. You can find it in the book of Ezekiel. And, and as this is an organization and our mission is to educate from a biblical perspective because that is the foundation to which we judge everything. We look at what's at world events and we put it on, we use the template of the Bible or the foundation of the scriptures to determine what we should believe or think, especially as it pertains to Israel. Because we know that God made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and their descendants. That covenant was eternal. And the covenant includes the land. But if you listen to the mainstream press or you listen to some world leaders or you spend a day at the United Nations, they all believe that the Jews or Israel are occupiers, that they are occupying land that belongs to the Palestinians. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not correct. Um, but we have history on our side to... To prove it, we have the Bible as a great text um, also to prove it. The Jewish people have always been associated with that land for almost 4,000 years. Um, of course, before the, the inhabitants before them were the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Hivites, the Hittites. All the ites were there. But it was the responsibility of the Israelites to go in under Joshua's leadership and eliminate, wipe out the inhabitants of the land because of their wickedness. And of course, they were supposed to come in and they were to conquer the territory. And you know, we look at, what, at the cities within Israel and even Gaza. Gaza was part of the, the territorial area of the tribe of Judah. 
And so, unfortunately, the Jews have pulled out of Gaza, and um, that was back in 2005. Many of you saw that, and we look what it has become. It's become a, a terrorist pit of evil and wickedness and attacks, daily attacks that are perpetrated against the Jewish people, Israel on a daily basis. So we have to stand on what is biblically expedient, not what is politically or what is made up of falsehoods. So anyhow, so I want to um, thank you again for joining us tonight. I do, again, hope you find this program informative, and we do want to hear from you. So consider going to the website, pjtn.org, and sign our petition there to remove Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And I just want to remind you all that I am on a march. We're launching our campaign um, next week. We are on the march to Minneapolis, Minnesota. We are going to be out there in September. So those of you who are in Minnesota, we hope that you will join us. Um, we're looking forward to meeting all of you and, um, and working to find out the facts on the ground about Ilhan Omar and about her community, because I have a hard time believing that um, a state within the heartland of America, like Minnesota, would adhere and would allow this type of rhetoric to come out, the, the anti-Semitic comments that we see, um, the lies and misrepresentation, misrepresentation coming out of Ilhan Omar and her district. So we're going to come out, we're going to hear from you, and um, we're going to help stir the, mo the, um, the, the community there to action against anti-Semitism. Um, I also just want to talk about some of the headlines in the news. Um, you all know that Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib um, are supposed to be going on a fact-finding mission to Israel. Well, um, uh, APAC is there with 41 members, Democrats, 41 Democrats from Congress who have made the trip to Israel to show their support um, of the state of Israel and the Jewish people against anti-Semitism, against the BDS movement, and Ilhan Omar, um, her colleagues don't agree with her position or Alexandria's or Rashida Tlaib's. So we have not, of course, Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib um, declined to go on that trip with AIPAC. I guess they don't want to hear the narrative that AIPAC presents. Um, they don't want to hear Israel's side of the issue. They're probably just going to hang out in Ramallah or in Gaza. And of course, if you all are on our mailing list, um, you would have signed up for it on pjtn.org. Um, but you probably would have seen the article here on Facebook as well and on our other social media platforms that we were um, calling the Israeli government because the Israeli government actually has a, um, a law which they will not allow people who support the BDS movement to come into the state of Israel. Well, of course, um, the Israeli government is l allowing the congresswoman to come in because they are members of Congress and because the Israeli government recognizes the Congress of the United States of, of America as a legitimate um, government body. Um, I don't know how they feel about how legitimate the Congresswomen are. Um, many of us here in the United States don't consider them legitimate at all because of their anti-Semitic views, their anti-American views, and of course that's why we have launched the campaign to remove them. Again, the petition, you can sign it if you haven't already. We're on our way to 50,000 signatures. Our goal is in stage one is to get 100,000 signatures from Americans across the country stating they don't want Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, or Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And ladies and gentlemen, it's not just here in the United States because I have people, because we have a global audience, we have people from around the world who has who have signed the petition, and they justify the signature because they say America's influence influences their country, and they don't want that type of influence coming back into their land. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I love the patriots around the world. So anyhow, so they are, um, they have not scheduled their trip to Israel, but we're anxiously awaiting to find out when they're going to go. Um, in the article that I published a couple of weeks ago, I suggested that that the Prime Minister um, not allow the women to come through um, David Ben-Gurion Airport, like all diplomats do, but allow them to come in through 
the Egyptian border to Gaza so that they can enter in through the tunnels that Hamas builds, or they can row in by boat onto the shore of Gaza. And that way they can see firsthand the impact of their fundraising campaigns that they were both involved in for Muslim Brotherhood front groups. And as you all know, Hamas is a Muslim Brotherhood front group. We're ho anxiously awaiting for President Trump to list the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist group. And so you all can help us by making phone calls to your congressmen, your senators, and to the White House and asking them, asking the president that when he lists Antifa as, an, as a, um, a terrorist entity, he should go ahead and include the Muslim Brotherhood too. That way we'll eliminate CARE, Islamic Relief USA, um, all of these the Students for Justice in Palestine on the college campuses that are inciting violence and hatred um, against Jewish students and Christian Zionist students as well. So anyhow, so that's the news on that. Also, um, one of the congressmen from Texas, a Democrat, is in hot water with his constituents because he had the audacity, this is Representative Castro, he had the audacity um, to condemn his Hispanic Latino constituents who financially supported and voted for Donald Trump in the last election. He published their businesses and their names in public so that other people could see who they are, hoping that that might cause Antifa to show up on the doorsteps of these businesses or these, these residences. And this is a sitting member of Congress, ladies and gentlemen. We need to add him to the list, the petition. He needs to be removed. The, the fact that anybody, a, a sitting congressman or congresswoman, would incite violence like this, like posting people's names and then calling them out, and he's taking pressure, I don't think um, he'll be reelected in 2020 when his seat comes back up. In fact, I'm sure somebody's probably looking at running against him after this episode. Um, what, the, what Representative Castro doesn't understand as... Um, someone who is who has Hispanic Latino descent, um, being a Cardosa, we don't support um, the Democrats. We don't support Ilhan Omar. We don't support as a family. We don't support them because their values are not American values. They don't support the Judeo-Christian values that our country was founded upon, and we definitely don't support any elected official that would list people's names in order to incite violence and attacks against them. So there's the news in that. Um, and then finally in education news, because many of you know that one of our major campaigns is exposing the inaccurate biased textbooks, historically inaccurate biased textbooks that do not reflect the Judeo-Christian values of Americans. And unfortunately, the state of California has a new curriculum or a new, pro, a new program that is required where students in California have to take an ethics um, curriculum studies. It will be required in high school um, that all students from California, you cannot uh, graduate without this class in ethnic studies. And um, apparently, the Department of Education has come under fire because this, um, this curriculum, which is titled the California Ethnic Studies Model Curriculum, which, which is required by the standards in the state of California, um, they will be considering adoption in September. And they have opened up for public debate, public conversation. So they're asking citizens and parents to weigh in, to make a statement. So I want to encourage you, if you are in California, you're a resident of California, I want to encourage you to, um, to go to the, contact the, um, the Department of Education and find out how you can weigh in to make your voice be heard. We will be um, uh, publishing, we will be producing a statement ourselves um, as proclaiming justice to the nations, um, calling on the Department of Education in California not to adopt this curriculum because the curriculum is biased. Um, of course, the, the program set out to show the diversity of the, the different ethnic 
uh, people groups who live in California not to attack a specific people, the Jews, or a specific country, Israel. Um, this curriculum, uh, part of the problem with the curriculum, it was, um, uh, there are other organizations and parents who are speaking out about it, and they're upset because there is the shocking omission of information about American Jews and anti-Semitism in this content. It's, it's use of, also the use of classic anti-Semitic stereotypes about Jews, singling out Israel for criticism, but nobody else, and blatant anti-Israel bias. Um, we had, I also found in the curriculum when I was reviewing it that the, un the unfortunate reality is that the, the state of California is not safeguarding its students, especially its Jewish students, but because of the content in the curriculum, it actually is making the Jewish students susceptible to anti-Semitic attacks because of the propaganda. And I was talking to someone earlier about this, and in you know we I was comparing the curriculum that is being used in the Palestinian Authority schools, and we wonder why kids. Arab children that live in the Palestinian controlled territory, why would they um, uh, uh, attack Jews, stab Jews, run over the Jews? Why would they put bombs in their backpacks and blow themselves up on buses? What is it that creates that type of hatred that would cause these kids to do this? And of course, a lot of it is not only what they're taught at home, the hatred that is bred within their home, but it is reinforced in their schools every day. It's reinforced in the curriculum, in their textbooks, by their teachers. And if we do not change and reverse the course of this same type of content, because ladies and gentlemen, as if you've been watching or following PJTN, you know that we have been fighting this issue specifically across the country. It's not just California that is indoctrinating its children with this propaganda. It's in states like Florida, it's in Tennessee, it's in Ohio, it's in Arizona, it's all over this country. And that's why we the people have got to rise up and we've got to let our voices be heard. For many, many years we have abstained from this process. We haven't been engaged in our local school districts. We haven't attended school board meetings. We haven't attended the county commission meetings. And it's typically the county commissioners or the um, city aldermen that are responsible for writing the check to pay for this curriculum. We should know what is being introduced to our children in their classrooms, in our community. Now, I'm in Tennessee, I'm not in California, but because of my platform as a global leader, especially with regards to this issue and how it will influence anti-Semitism, how it will influence attacks against Jewish students, like what we see on college campuses throughout California, because they've adopted this same type of narrative within the professors and within the college curriculum. But if we do not speak out and start getting involved on the local level, we will lose this country because our children will not know that we are a constitutional republic. Of course, it's hard to believe that we're actually a constitutional republic because our laws are not being enforced. And so the Constitution is not being upheld, and that has to change. That's why every one of these congressmen and every one of these senators, if they're not going to uphold the Constitution of the United States of America, they should be voted out. And if they swear an oath, when they put their hand on the Bible, or some, the Quran, but if they put their hand on the Bible and swear that they will uphold the Constitution of the United States of America, they are required to do so, but they're not. And of course, case in point is what's happening in California. They pass a law that says we have to have ethnic studies curriculum in all California schools. It's a requirement. 
for children who graduate from high school, they have to take a class in this issue to learn about the diversity, to eliminate the hatred. And what do they do? They adopt curriculum that inspires hatred and influences hatred against a specific people group, the Jews, and a specific country, Israel. They're promoting the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement, which is an anti-Semitic movement. Even the Chancellor of Germany, the German government, said that BDS is anti-Semitic. When you're boycotting, when you're divesting and sanctioning, and you're holding one country, one people to a specific um, set of standards, but you don't require those standards of other countries that are chopping the heads off of Christians, blowing, them, blowing up Christians in church buildings during their services, beating up Jews in the streets in Germany or in any other European country. When you have that going on and you have a society that's not going to protect its Jewish community, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be the rest of us next. And we see prime example, the Jews are always the canary in the coal mine. Look at the United States of America. If we are going to turn our back and we're going to ignore anti-Semitism and we're going to ignore Jews that are getting shot up in their synagogue and murdered because of these, 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 um, these white Christian nationalists. Now, I don't know if these two recent guys were Christian nationalists, but the Poway shooter and the Tree of Life shooter, they both were. They used New Testament scriptures to justify and legitimize murdering these Jews. It is completely unacceptable. And when we teach this garbage to our children on a daily basis, they are susceptible. They will become, and we will see, just like what's happening in the Palestinian controlled areas, we will see more of the carnage that we see happening in our communities. God is not going to sit back and be silent. If we won't defend the Jews, then they will come after us next. And case in point was Walmart and that, that um, area in Dayton, Ohio. It's absolutely just appalling that this is what we become. And unless we turn this nation back, Unless we bring God back in to the city square, back into our children's classrooms and teach them how and why the nation was founded. We should not be ashamed. We are not trying to indoctrinate our children um, to teach about God and teach about the, the godly influence that, that Christianity and Judaism has played in this country and the founding of this nation is not unconstitutional. We are not asking students to convert to Judaism. We are not asking students to convert to Catholicism. We are only teaching in a historical context the role that Judaism and Christianity played in our nation. It's why our nation was great. Um, Alexis de Tocqueville came here in the 1800s to study why America was exceptional. This is a Frenchman who came here, couldn't understand, and you know why he found America exceptional? Because unlike France, America allowed its people to let its faith, its belief in God, govern their daily affairs. In France, politics and faith would never mix. But in the United States, we had congressmen, men and women, leaders, Jewish and Christian, who have upheld their faith and they've allowed, and they it was that faith that determined their course of action and how they governed themselves and how they governed our states, our, our communities, and our Congress. And we have fallen away from that, ladies and gentlemen. And the only way we are going to return is if we get on our knees, repent before Almighty God, and ask Him to have mercy on this nation. So I hope you'll join with me and my family in praying for the families who lost loved ones this past weekend and that God would give wisdom to President Trump and the leaders to do the right thing, not to accuse people, but to stand up and accept their part in allowing what our nation has come to. Having said that, we are. I just want to remind you that... Um, um, if you're here on Facebook tonight, if you aren't following us and sharing our articles, I want to encourage you to do so. Also, we are on Twitter. You can follow us at, at PJTN. 
um, on Twitter, and of course, we're there on Instagram as well. And please share this program. Please share PJTN. Org with your family and friends. Um, if you want to learn more about the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement, you can actually go to Amazon Prime. Our award-winning documentary that we produced called Boycott This um, is there for the viewing. You can watch it, or you can go to our website, and you can order your own personal copy that you can share with family and friends, your, your um, students, high school, college students. Um, it's very entertaining. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, we used uh, satire. To, uh, to discuss the issue, but it was very well, um, it's been very well received around the globe. So we hope that you'll take the time to watch it. And of course, sadly, as I mentioned before, um, with Christian nationalists who are involved in, um, in shooting up these Jewish uh, synagogues, it is anti-Semitism within Christianity is on the rise. And a lot of the, the um, incitement is coming from the false heresy or the heresy of replacement theology and unfortunately for 2,000 years when the Jewish leaders um, slowly left the, um, the group of Christians they and more Gentiles came in to the church as the church became more Gentilized the church moved away from its Hebraic foundation and in moving away from its Hebraic foundation, lost touch with our roots. And unfortunately, that has cost us dearly because many Christians throughout Christian history have persecuted the Jewish people. We know history documents it during the pogroms, um, during the Inquisition, during the Holocaust, and by and large, you see it happening again today. And that's why these, again, these two young men who called themselves Christian nationalists um, who quoted New Testament scriptures justified and legitimized murdering those Jews in those synagogues. So I just, um, I want to encourage you, there's a documentary on our website, on the store page, that talks about the Christian anti-Semitism. If you are not um, familiar with it, you can order a copy of The Forgotten People, Christianity, and the Holocaust. And it's a very informative um, program. I think you'll... Um, enjoy it, and we encourage you to share it with your family and friends or your your Bible study group. Share it with your pastor. Um, if you'd like to do a screening, we'd love to come to your community um, and screen it with you. Um, the other thing I wanted to just mention before we move on is that, um, like I said, we are going to be coming out to um, to Minneapolis, Minnesota, in September. I hope that you will get on our mailing list so you'll get all the information. I'm going to be in Florida um, in a couple of weeks also. So if you're watching us from Florida, you can find out all of our speaking events, where I'll be um, on our calendar on our website. So I hope you'll go there um, and you'll, you'll join us wherever we are when we come to your community. Um, also, I just want to take a quick break because I want to show you another opportunity um, as to how you can support the work that we're doing here at PJTN. Um, it's important. It's, it's the contributions that we receive from donors like you that make this program and all of our work fighting anti-Semitism possible. So with that, I hope you'll take a look and you'll consider supporting PJTN by becoming a watchman tonight. I want to take you to Israel in pictures and film. I want you to see how God's sovereign hand can be seen before our eyes right here in this land. That's why PJTN is offering a special anniversary package that includes a captivating new book and award-winning DVD. Israel Rising is a unique visual story of Israel's miraculous journey from unforgiving desert to thriving nation. Thousands of years ago, the prophet Ezekiel foretold a future time in which the arid land of Israel would come alive for its people. Now this breathtaking book documents the fulfillment of this vision as rarely seen photographs from the 1880s to the 1940s are juxtaposed with recent photos of the same locations. This book will inspire and captivate you as it illuminates Israel's foretold awakening in a new and unforgettable way. In addition, you'll receive the award-winning documentary Israel Indivisible, The Case for the Ancient Homeland. 
This inspiring film examines the many political twists and turns that make Israel the world's most controversial nation. From Abraham and the Promise to the issues facing the Jewish state today, the film examines the historical, archaeological, legal, and biblical foundations for the modern state of Israel. This is a limited time offer for these two remarkable resources for just a one-time gift of $70 today. Your generous donation will help ensure that PJTN stays on the front lines and in the headlines of all the important issues facing Israel and our Jewish brethren. So please go to PJTN.org today. Welcome back. And I want to just look at some of the responses because we've got a lot of people joining us tonight live. Tina Whistler is on. Hi, Lori. Tina, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, Ari is on and he said yes. I'm sure he's agreeing with everything <laughs> that we're saying. Um, Urge is with us again tonight. Urge, great to have you back on. Um, Urge is telling me that I read that the Dayton shooter was a Trump-hating leftist who supported Elizabeth Warren. Um, yes, we are finding more information out. In fact, if you read the manifesto, um, he was also a huge environmentalist. There were just some of the traits that he was writing about, if he wrote, wrote that uh, manifesto. Um, some of his traits were not indicative of someone who is conservative or would be considered a Christian. Now, I have been scanning the news um, if any of you out there know that either of these young, uh, these young men said that they were Christians or that they were quoting New Testament scriptures in those manifestos, that's what I look for, is are they using the New Testament Bible, like I said, because Christians have been doing this for 2,000 years. Um, so I have been looking for that. So if anybody, any of you who are watching tonight, you find information, please post it on Facebook, send me an email. Um, at comments at pjtn.org. Okay, and Monique is with us also. Monique, great to have you back. And Monique is saying, the strange thing I saw was on the July 21st episode of Focus on Israel. At the beginning of the show, there was a message stating that the views expressed in the following program do not necessarily reflect the views of Daystar Network. I thought Daystar is a pro-Israel network. Why would they have a message like that? It was the episode called Disinformation Against Israel, airing at 11 p.m. Central Time. Well, Monique, um, most programs like ours are preempted by the, the network because of the controversy or um, because of the content that we deal with here. And, of course, they're doing it to protect themselves um, legally because somebody could sue. And, of course, we are prepared for that. In fact, a couple weeks ago, I mentioned on our, one of our shows that one of the networks, one of our 22 global media partners who is actually in Europe, um, in the Netherlands, was pulled because an Arab who complained, a Muslim, complained and said that I was, our program was falsely accusing Muslims. We were saying derogatory things about Muslims. And, of course... We never say anything derogatory about Muslims. We do talk about Islamic terrorists. And yes, we are opposed to Islamic terrorists. And if that person that was tuning in and saw our program heard me say Islamic terrorists, then yes. Um, if they want to try to sue us, they, they did um, uh, register a complaint with their broadcasting network over there in the Netherlands and the, our program and the network was pulled off the air for three weeks until they could um, have a, a hearing, a proper hearing to determine if what I said in the show was um, inaccurate, derogatory, hate, Islamophobic. And guess what? Ironically, the, um, the broadcasting uh, network reviewed the content and found that there was nothing that was hateful or inaccurate. I presented the facts as they were. So there you go. But I have heard from that network that was pulled. They are back on the air. Thank God. Our program is still running. But they have filed, <clears throat> excuse me, they have filed a, um, uh, an appeal to the commissioner's decision. So we are going to be attacked. And I'm sure that Daystar is just protecting themselves, and I completely understand that um, because we are going to deal with some of the issues that nobody else will talk about. 
And that's what makes this program so popular. And that's why you're here. So, Monique, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Tina also went on to say we have to put this will, his will or laws, so his kingdom will come. Amen. And that's one of the things that I have been saying is that when a nation forgets God, when God told the ancient Israelites that if they did not obey God's commandments and, and um, obey his decrees, that he would allow the hedge of protection to come down from the nation and the enemy would come in. Well, we all remember, I'm sure everybody on this watching the program tonight remembers 9-11. And many of us also know the story about the Babylonian king, Belshazzar, who was partying and celebrating and drinking and um, from the goblets that were stolen from the first temple. And they were having this celebration. All of a sudden, a man's hand appears on the wall in this room, this hall, where they're celebrating. And um, Belshazzar was told by Almighty God that you have been weighed in the balance and you've been fought, caught wanting. And, of course, he lost his kingdom immediately. But when, you, when we look at what happened on 9-11, if that wasn't an obvious sign from Almighty God that the hedge of protection, symbolic, those twin towers coming down because we have turned, our nation has turned against God. Like I said, we removed prayer from our schools. We're not teaching our children about God or the Bible anymore. And the foundation, the history, that it, the role it played in, in building this, this nation and the Judeo-Christian values that our country was founded upon. You know, we have decided to try to do it our own way. And um, this weekend, Saturday night, it'll be um, at sunset. It's the 9th of Av. And on the 9th of Av, historically, horrible things have happened to the Israelites on this day. The first and second temple were destroyed. Um, they say that Hitler started exterminating and, and murdering the Jews on the 9th of Av. And so here we are, we're just coming off of this horrific weekend of what happened, and the 9th of Ab is, is uh, slowly approaching, the end of this week. And it makes us wonder, you know, are we going to look at the signs, look at the signposts that God is presenting to us to get our attention? And are we going to turn our back on Almighty God, or are we turning back to Him? And that's what's going to, to help us to deal with, with this hatred in this issue. It is people like, and yes, I lay the foot of the blame of the racism and the hatred and the false accusations of racism squarely at the feet of President Obama. We did not have an issue with racism in this country. Now, are there people in this country who were racist? Yes. But were we actively involved in being racist in our communities? No. I work in a community, I live in a community where there are people of various different ethnic backgrounds, but I treat everyone the same way we were all raised to treat people. And that was the golden rule, do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. And so when Obama started for eight years beating the drum about how horrible America is, we should not be surprised that now it is white men who are being targeted and falsely accused. Pretty soon it will be white women. It won't matter if you're of Hispanic descent. It will only matter what your skin color is. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to stop. We have to go back to our foundational principles and we have to reject these lies and this disinformation that is being fueled against us and our nation by people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar. They have no clue what it's like to be an American and be raised as a patriot in this country. I don't know what school Rashida Tlaib went to, but Ilhan Omar didn't go to schools during the informative years, like elementary and middle school, when she, because I believe it was high school when she finally came over here. But obviously, the influence of Somalia, the influence of Kenya, and the Islamic background that she comes from instilled and inspired the hate that comes out of her mouth. So 
as a daughter, a granddaughter of immigrants who came over here from Portugal, I will tell you I'm grateful to be an American. I'm grateful that my great-grandparents took everything that they had, saved up all the money that they had to bring our family here. And it came at a price, but they came here legally. They had to file the paperwork, they had to pay, and they had to prove that they had something of value to add to the American dream. And I and my children are the beneficiaries of that decision that they made. So having said that, I know we, we were going to um, get into the, the Bible study with, um, on Copernicus and the Jews, and I want to just, we've got about 10 minutes, and I want to just kind of recap where we were with our last study. And for those of you who have not seen um, the, um, any of these programs, um, we are doing a, a, a book study, kind of a Bible study, on Copernicus and the Jews. And if you don't have a copy of the book, I want to encourage you to order yourself a copy. You can go to our website, our store page. We have it available. And you can order a copy for yourself and do the study. <clears throat> we are up to page um, 19. We just finished talking um, last week about um, the different translations, Bible translations. You know, if we are not translating the Bible from its original text, from its original foundation, which is Hebrew, or Hebrew and Aramaic languages, we have to look at the culture of the time that the Bible was written. If we don't study the Bible from that Hebraic culture and understanding by the Jews, because they were the ones who were teaching in the synagogues, then we will not understand what the text of Scripture is telling us. Unfortunately, within Christianity, we have studied the Bible through Greco-Roman lenses. We have removed the Bible from its original foundation, its original meaning, which is Hebrew. And honestly, I'm not even, I'm not versed in Hebrew, but I have a strong concordance that I use when I do my studies. And I look at the English words and I go to look back in my concordance to see what is the Hebrew word? What does that mean? What is that Hebrew definition for that word? And there's so much that you, so much richness to studying the Bible that way. It takes a long time, but just taking one verse and breaking it down and understanding the Hebraic, it changes the whole context of what we're reading. It gives us so much depth. And you know, there's a verse in the scriptures that um, that talks about God hiding things. That it is the glory of God to conceal a matter. And it is the honor of kings to search a matter out. That scripture is telling us that God conceals things. He's not just going to um, give everything away. He wants us to pant for him, to understand who he is. As a deer pants for water in the book of Psalms, so our soul should long for almighty God. And we should desire to know this God whom we've given our lives to serve. And if you don't know him in, in that way, in an intimate way, I want to encourage you the best way to get to know him is by reading his book, by reading the book that's been written and handed down. And, you know, I was talking earlier with um, some people, and we were talking about the New Testaments, again, talking about the program tonight, and this was going to be the topic. And we were talking about how the, how New Testament Christians have misinterpreted the scriptures because they don't read the New Testament from a Hebraic foundation. Because the authors, it is believed that all of the authors were all Jewish. Um, I know there's dispute about Luke, but I do believe that Luke was a Jew. If you, write, if you read how he wrote and you put it in the context, in fact, if you look at what, what Yeshua was saying in the New Testament, he wasn't quoting himself. If you look at what the disciples were saying, what they wrote down, um, they weren't quoting themselves. They weren't even quoting each other. They were quoting Abraham. They were um, quoting Isaac, the prophet. They were quoting Moses. And so if we read the New Testament and we take it outside of the context of its foundation, then we're not going to understand 
that God made a covenant to a specific people. He did not make the covenant to the, the Christian church. And Christians have to understand that. And that may shock some of you, but it doesn't. There's not one place where he said it. He said, I will make a covenant with the descendants, with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and their descendants forever. If you look at the book of Jeremiah, in Jeremiah 31, you look at, at the, um, the new covenant. He talks about, he tells the prophet Jeremiah, he's going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. He didn't say, I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of the church or with Christianity. He said the house of Israel and the house of Judah. So that opens up even more questions. But ladies and gentlemen, as we we're, we're going to pick this up next week and we're going to um, continue this study. But I want you to consider as you're studying your Bible, as you're reading your Bible, think about the translation that you are using. I do use one um, English translation, and that's the New King James Version, because I use it because it has a good concordance in it, and it always shows the scriptures, because one of the things I do, and I want to encourage all of you to do, if you're studying the New Testament, and there's a quote, or there's a, a principle or a concept that is written in one of the books in the New Testament, Try to go back and trace that verse back to its origin. It's amazing that if you will take the time to do this, those scriptures, those verses that you're studying in the New Testament, if they haven't been added to, because some of the, this is what we were talking about earlier, is that some of the New Testament um, was added, there, there were verses that were added on that weren't part of the original writings. And how do you know what is part of the original writings and what is not part of the original writings? You are able to trace it back to the Torah. That is the foundation, the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Those are the foundational books that everything else, the prophets lay their hat on. Everything is there. God wrote the Bible or spoke the word to these men who wrote this Bible down. And this book is a book written to Israel, for Israel, and about Israel. And if you are a Christian, as a Gentile, if you accepted Yeshua as Messiah, you are brought into the commonwealth of Israel. You are grafted in to that green, uh, or that, that green olive shoot. You do not replace the Jews. You become part of Israel. And so I want to, again, encourage you to study, to read, order this book. Um, we are going to pick up at page 19, the, the bottom paragraph next week, because we've already run out of time, and I, I just can't believe it. But... There was a lot of information that I shared with you, and we're going to go back. We're going to um, go ahead and um, uh, after this study, as we finish up the study, we're going to go ahead and um, watch one more video message, and I'm going to come back. And after this next video message, we are going, I'm going to take some more questions, read some of your, your comments, and then we will close it up. Um, this evening. So let's take a look at this next video. From studying history, it's very clear that what starts with the Jews never ends only with the Jews. We must strongly stand against any anti-Semitic trends, for if not stopped, they'll cause harm to all of us, and we'll witness the downfall of our Judeo-Christian Western culture. Today, many people say there's no longer a need for a Jewish state that Jews around the world no longer need a place of refuge. But anyone who has heard recent statistics about the worldwide rise in anti-Semitism would never make such a claim. The reality is that neo-Nazi groups and Nazi sympathizers are increasing around the world. Surveys show that over one billion people in the world harbor anti-Semitic attitudes, 
Close to 50% believe that Jews have too much power in the business world, and two-thirds of the world's population has never heard of the Holocaust, or believe the historic accounts of it are inaccurate. If there's one thing history has taught the Jewish people, a place they can go in time of need is essential, and Israel fulfills that role. But the need for a Jewish state is not limited to being only a refuge for Jews. Jewish tradition in Israel grants full rights for women and people of all races, faiths, and gender. This tradition is what often makes Israel among the first countries to send doctors and field hospitals to any place where a natural disaster occurs, utilizing their medical advances to save lives worldwide. Muslims, Christians, and people of every faith or those of no faith have the freedom to worship or not worship as they choose. For Muslims, the Jewish state goes out of its way to provide this freedom. For example, every Israeli university gives students the option of deferring their exams during the month of Ramadan. The Knesset calls off all sessions at sunset during Ramadan to ensure that Muslim Knesset members can break their fasts with the traditional iftar dinner. In an open and democratic manner, opportunities for education, advancement, and careers exist for all citizens in the Jewish state. Sadly, such rights and opportunities do not exist in any of the Muslim Arab states. For example, in neighboring Jordan, Jews cannot become citizens. And in Saudi Arabia, no non-Muslim can become a citizen. Saying that Israel must cease to exist as a Jewish state while accepting that other countries define themselves as Muslim is pure hypocrisy. In most of these countries, no rights exist for non-Muslims, women, and the LGBT community. Don't let yourself be manipulated by evil people with a wicked agenda. When the self-serving villains are in control, good people from all religions suffer. Muslims, Christians, and all people of conscience should stand proudly and show respect for a country that gives so much to the world in so many ways. Do your part, do your research, and do what you can to make a difference. Because what happens in Israel does affect us all. This is not just a Jewish or just an Israeli problem. This is a problem for all humanity, for each and every one of us who believe in freedom and human rights. Learn more about what you can do at PJTN.org. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Again, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we're going to go ahead and take some more um, comments here. Tina's on, and she says we have to um, put his laws, um, put his will, his laws, so his kingdom will come, um, so we can be protected, absolutely. Ari, all these shooters harbor forms of anti-Semitism. Yeah, um, if we look at... Because it's interesting, if we look at the, the shooters, these young men, and this is one of the problems with what we were talking about earlier with the content and the curriculum that we're teaching our children, especially these young guys, we're not giving our kids, we don't teach our kids hope anymore. We don't teach our kids that they have a destiny um, and, and God has a plan for their lives. And so they grow up in, in a dysfunctional home where they're not being encouraged or nurtured. Then they go to school and they listen to um, uh, teachers who are spewing, you know, this, this false narrative and garbage, which is contrary to, to maybe what they heard when they were going through Sunday school, and they're disillusioned and they're confused. But many of these, these shooters like this are anti-Semitic. They hold anti-Semitic views. But we are looking for, I'm looking for more information, so if there's anything that anybody can find and send to me, I would be grateful because I can't be any, everywhere and see everything. So I rely, I rely on my PJTN Watchman. That's another reason why you need to become a PJTN Watchman. I just want to remind you, it's only $20 a month. That's a cup of coffee if you go to Starbucks or Caribou Coffee or whatever your favorite coffee is. You know, most coffee cups are $5, and you could be making a contribution to support what we're doing to keep us going. So think about that. Um, 
Let me see what else. Uh, cleaving teens going on to say cleaving in heart, mind, behavior was the only sin keeping the kingdom from coming. Um, and Jesus spoke his words through all the prophets, true prophets mouth. Um, hi, Lori from Nashville. This is Cherise Smith, Sapanari. Cherise, good to have you on the program tonight. Thanks for joining us. And then Tina goes on to say, only Israel had true prophets and Judah. Yes, that's what I love about my audience. They are so educated. You've been paying attention, and I know many of you have already been studying the Bible, and you know this. That's why you're here. So thank you. Um, Tina says we need to read from the law and the prophets as Yeshua did on the Sabbath on Friday sundown to Saturday at sundown. That's right. The Lord didn't do away with the Sabbath, ladies and gentlemen. Christians believe it's on Sunday. The Lord never changed it. It's always been the same. Um, Tina said, blessed, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Amen, Tina. Um, his laws, his words spoken to Moses and all the true prophets. So, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to thank you again. It, you inspire me and encourage me to see um, you here making, sharing your comments. It encourages me to know that there are other people who are informed and who are taking a stand as well. We're here to protect our Jewish community. And the reason why we do it is because it says it in the Bible. Um, God's told Abraham that I will bless those who bless you, and he who ignores you I will utterly destroy. Even if we ignore Israel and the Jewish people, and I can't tell you how many times I've met with pastors to um, encourage them to screen one of our films for, our con for their congregation. And I've had pastors tell me over and over, well, that may be your calling, but that's not mine. Well, God said in Genesis 12, 3, he would utterly destroy them. If they who ignore Israel that God would utterly destroy them. I will bless those who bless you, and he who ignores you, I will utterly destroy. That's his words. That's the Hebraic interpretation. Do you see how deep that scripture is? You know, when we understand it from a Hebraic foundation, it makes a huge difference, and it should be sobering to all of us to realize that it would be a horrible thing to have to stand before an angry God and to have to give an account and justify the decisions that we made and our ignorance. There is no space, there is no room today to be biblically ignorant. We have so much information at our fingertips. We have the Bible, we have the internet to do research, we have extra books that we could study and read, but we're ignorant because we don't choose to study. And so we will have to give an account. This is all going on in our lifetime, ladies and gentlemen. And there's a reason why God has put us on this planet at this time, why he's breathed life into our souls, and why he has gifted each one of us and brought us even here tonight for such a time as this. So again, please continue to keep Israel and the Jewish community across the United States and around the world in your prayers. I'm reminded in Isaiah 62 to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, that you may prosper who loves thee. And I also want to remind you, if you have any questions about anything we talked about tonight um, or comments you want to make, you can always email them to me at comments at pjtn.org. Um, and then, of course, like us on Facebook. You're here right now. Let's do it. And follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And don't forget to su subscribe to our PJTN TV um, on YouTube while we can still have our programs on YouTube. We've already had one program pulled down because YouTube thought it was hate-filled, that it was Islamophobic, because I was talking about how um, Muslims, the Islamists, the far right, the left, and radical Islam is fueling the anti-Semitism today. And so I guess they didn't like that. Maybe it was the leftist part. But anyhow, um, I want to just, again, thank you. Don't forget to sign the petition to remove Ilhan Omar. And those of you in Minnesota, I'll be coming to see you shortly. For those, for everybody else, if you want me to come and speak to your community, we would love to hear from you. Comments at pjtn.org. And I want to thank you again for joining us this evening. God bless you. I've got one more message before we close up tonight. But thank you for all you do on behalf of our Jewish brethren and for the state of Israel. We'll see you next time.
To support this program, send your tax-deductible gift to Proclaiming Justice to the Nations, P.O. Box 682711, Franklin, Tennessee, 37068. You can also support PJTN online. Visit PJTN.org or call 1-877-873-9020. Anti-Semitism has reached epic proportions, and Israel is now surrounded by nations who seek its destruction. For Israel to lose just one battle would mean losing everything. As Christians, it is our biblical responsibility to stand with our Jewish brethren and Israel. PJTN needs your help to reach more Christians with this urgent message. Please visit our website to become a member today and order our award-winning documentaries. You must decide that you won't be silent. Sign up now at PJTN.org. God bless you and thank you for your support and prayers. To support